Hi guys, how's it? Uh, kia ora to my Kiwi followers and anyone else in the world. A little bit of a break here before the after the end of the game. I did watch the All Blacks and Wales game, and um, man, that poor Alan Wynn Jones uh, injured once again, um, and the ABs on fire. Thank God we do not play them uh, in this Northern Tour because they are looking good at the moment. And I'm sure my Kiwi followers will agree. Um, not at the best form, but damn, they are looking solid at the moment. Uh, that is not what this video is about. First off, thank everyone for subscribing. Hit that notification icon for new videos. Uh, we've got Springboks and Wales next Saturday. I am ex super, super excited. I've got a backdrop. I'm going to go live. It's going to be awesome. Go Springboks. But uh, this is about the lesser talked about game this morning. We had Scotland taking on the Sea Eagle of Tonga. Final score, 60-14. I know that seems like a drubbing. You know what? I'll give you some info here, man. Tonga, not bad. That forward pack, very solid. They're number one. They were calling him the Tongan Bear. That boy was a big unit, man. I love seeing the big boys do their thing. And, um, you know, 60-14, yeah, that is, yeah. Uh, you know what? Don't call it a drub. It was a drubbing. They, they did get beat. But Tonga didn't look that bad. This was definitely not the same Tonga team that we watched the All Blacks put up over 100 on uh, at... Uh, was it Mount Smart? It wasn't even in Eden Park. It was at Mount Smart Stadium, the rugby league stadium there in Auckland uh, a little while back. This was a totally different side, it seemed, and um, kind of bring up a couple of the keynotes. I uh, got to go ahead and bring up the fact that uh, on debut, Kyle Stein, the Safa boy playing for Scotland, four tries, four tries. That's nothing to shake your head about. Um... Kinghorn, like three of seven for kicking or two of something. <laughs> this was the guy that lost it against the States back in uh, Houston, the game I talk about all the time, his bad kicking. He was not really the best at kicking. Uh, Rufus McLean with uh, two tries, never got the third one for the hat trick. Um, like I said, the thing that I noticed the most about Tonga, and I brought it up during my live broadcast, is man preparation, preparation, preparation. And you see it with those countries like Tonga. I love Tonga rugby. I, you know, had the flag up for my live broadcast. Love that. That's my little small nation that I will always like throw 100% support behind just because it's like, there's so much talent coming out of that country. They just don't stay there. And it's so unfortunate. Um, the veteran Fiva at fullback, doing all the kicking for them, uh, had three uh, penalty penalties um, at various. Uh, he was good. He was money on them. And then the lone try at the uh, 58th minute, uh, Lola Haya, Lola Haya, uh, one of the big boys getting in. Um, it was. A very young Scottish squad. No Stuart Hogg. None of the big names. No Finn Russell. None of these guys even dressed. They went with eight debuts. Um, Tonga had seven debuts. But that forward pack, those guys were all debuts, it seems. And they were really good. I was not at all disappointed by what I saw. Uh, Kurt Marath getting injured there. It looked like he had a shoulder issue uh, about the 50th minute or so. Didn't really get in the mix too much. I thought he would be doing the kicking. He did not. Uh, the veteran 5 at 15 was doing it. Um, Kurt Marath realizing that thing is like 35, 36 years old. And he is the highest scoring Tongan player in history. Now playing his trade here in the MLR with the Austin Gilgronies. I follow him a bit on social media. He is right at home there in Austin, Texas, going to UT games. And just, um, you know, for me living here now, I, I, I do have a lot of appreciation for athletes that come into this country and live in Texas and really just embrace the culture. Uh, as a matter of fact, I will bring up a gentleman that just got admitted into the World Rugby Hall of Fame. I can't even think of his name now that I'm thinking about it. He was playing for the Sabercats. I saw the guy play at like a college junior college stadium here in Dallas when they were doing a friendly versus the Dallas Reds 
Um, and he's now a Hall of Famer, man. Wow, dude. Like, I've seen him, you know, I've been, like, he's walked past me. That's, like, right on, man. I've walked past a guy that's the only guy I can say that about the World Rugby uh, Hall of Fame. That he's the one guy that I've actually, you know, like, he walked past me. He was much taller than me because I am a short man. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool with that. Um, this was a great game. It was definitely, like I said, you could tell the forward pack for Tonga was really solid. Their backs, that's why you had the center, the wing scoring so much. Both, uh, you know, the wings, both one had two and one had four tries for Scotland. And it was, that was the, the whole they could, the forward pack was solid as um, scrums. You could once again preparation, preparation, preparation. We had, they had a they had the muscle to win scrums. They just didn't have, just wasn't quite you know when they lock in, it just wasn't totally there. Um, you saw quite a few of the Tongan sides collapse the scrums, and it really just like I said, it came down to the Scottish boys have had some time to work with each other, get everything under key. The Tongans came together a week ago, and that's, you know, um, I, I say the preparation thing because Johnny Wilkinson said it famously in a documentary about that's what he sees with those Tongans is like, man, they just don't have the preparation that we have as a side in England and the money and the support, but I will still keep my Tonga flag, and if they play again and it's a decent time, I will definitely go live for that just to uh, appease some of my Tongan followers. If I have gained any, cool, right on. Welcome to the fold. Um, if not, uh, hopefully I will gain some in the future. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was a great game. Uh, BT Murray filled was about uh, half full. The upper upper bowl on the one side of it was pretty much empty, but it looked like they came out for support for their boys, and I, you know, I applaud that. A lot of us, uh, a lot of the fans there in the Southern Hemisphere, it's something that's like, especially my Safa followers, it's like, yeah, we haven't had fans in the stands, man. It sucks to be able to see everybody else do it. And, you know, I, uh, I live in America and we've been able to, to do it for a while now. So, but uh, next weekend will be even more of a packed weekend. Uh, we'll get my video as soon as uh, Coach Jacques gets the lineups out, and we see what Wales has to put out with the absence of Alan Wynn Jones. Sucks to see that guy go down. He's such a solid guy. He's one of those guys I've always respected on the pitch, and uh, love the hell out of Alan Wynn Jones. He's one of those guys that um, I think he definitely has a Hall of Fame resume behind him. Just lacks the cup, lacks when holding up the cup, and. and too old to probably get it now at this point so but um yeah i will see you guys all again later this week when lineups get announced i'll probably do a little video in between but uh you guys stay good wherever you're at it's a beautiful saturday evening here in north texas halloween is tomorrow I'm gonna take the kiddo out do a little trick-or-treating last year she's 13 this year so it's the last year she wants to do it she has the cutest little sloth onesie. She looked absolutely cute in it. That's so great, you know, being a dad and seeing your kid in a costume. You just, I tried to get her to dress up like a monkey. I was going to wear a gorilla suit or she'd dress up like a banana. I'd be the gorilla and the missus would be the zookeeper with the net. She was not keen on it. It sucks because it was like... That would have been a hilarious costume. I mean, like, I'm a big body boy. I could pull off the gorilla costume pretty, pretty well, I think. And she would have looked cute as in the banana and I'm chasing this is chasing us with the uh the net but no dice she was not keen to it so that's what happens when you have a teenager it seems so um yeah cheers guys and have a good week talk to you very all again very soon